Now today is part 4 of the Ultimate 2 Plus review slash explore with me slash tutorial. It's kind of like, you know, <laughs> a lot of things actually. And today what we're gonna do, actually, if you haven't watched, you know, the first three parts, uh, I highly recommend you watching them. Uh, the links are in the description below or in the letter I, wherever it is. <laughs> I don't know. In this part, I am going to go through how to back up your floppy drives, your floppy drives, your floppy disks, <laughs> and uh, how to connect your real floppy 1541 with the ultimate, and also how to, you know, copy your D64s on the floppy if you wish to do that. And uh, same with the cassette. And uh, this is going to be the final part, unless there's like extra stuff which I need to go into depth. But I'm going to, you know, close this series with this, this ultimate uh, 2 plus series. Uh, until, you know, any future part. <laughs> because I want to move on to Amiga stuff. You know, it's a lot of stuff going on there and I'm just like, eh. So anyway, let's begin. Now, what we're going to do first is um, teach you how to back up from, you know, the floppy as a D64. Yeah. Now, first things first, you will notice that I'm using Action Replay straight away and that is because you know some kind soul on my channel has actually said um, you know told me how to do that because what I was doing before is okay install fast load and I was doing you know do this and it's just uh, doing Commodore and run stop and it was just like press play on tape I'm like what the freak is this <laughs> so um, you know you don't do that what you do is F7, install fast load, and then you do F1, press F1, and then press return. And it should load from device 8, which is this. Okay, that's clear. <laughs> that's done now. So, how I've connected these, this up now. Now, you have to daisy chain this with the Ultimate 2 Plus, so it works as. I don't know how to change the device on these um, 1541s. The I believe the 1541 has got switches at the back or something that you can change the device number from device 8 to device 9. So what I'm going to do here is I connected this to the Commodore 64 and then the ultimate with another serial cable to... So we go into um, here and what else you need to do is go into the settings which is F2 shift and F1. Uh, you go into 1541 drive A settings, you disable drive A because that is drive A. Basically this is your drive, your eight, device 8 now. So you want to disable that, that's already disabled and device B make sure that's enabled and make sure it is 9. So that is 9, this is 8. Good. Now let's come out of there. Now. What you do if you want to back up a disk, uh, let me put the disk in the backup. Now, what I'm gonna, which one I'm gonna back up is the bare essentials. And I really like this, it's got like so much in it. I need to do, I need to do its own episode on the gameplay and everything because I do like this. I watched uh, my friend Brian, Casual Commodore, play it a while ago and I was just like, <gasps> I must have this game. So yeah, it's definitely a nice. And uh, it's got I'll show you, you know, I'll do a proper dedicated episode to this, a video for this, uh, the Bare Essentials gameplay and, you know, unboxing because, well, un opening and stuff is already unboxed. <laughs> anyway, so let's put this in here. I love these floppy disks still on the Amiga and here. Uh, this is like my first time using five and a quarter inch. Anyway, <laughs> that's in there. Uh, what you do is you go to F5, which is this menu here, and you want to do Ulti Copy 8 because 8 is the source. Now, Ulti Copy 8 will copy from the source and create a D64 where you're actually located. So, you know, let's come out of here. Now, wherever you're located in your file, let's say you want to go inside here or go inside wherever, you, where you are at the moment, it will create a D64 there. So, F5. And this doesn't work. I'll show you why it freaking doesn't work. It just keeps saying error reading disk. Doesn't matter which disk I put in, I've tried freaking few and it says the same thing. So let's... 
aerating disc. So that didn't work. I'm no idea why it's doing this there. It just sounds like a freaking machine gun. And that's it. Okay, cool. Bear. Back. Up. No. Does that work? Let's have a look. Okay, I have no idea how to run fast load on device 9. If you do know, please let me know how to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this, this one and just quickly enable that one, the um, drive A. Okay, let's enable that, done. Um, go back, let's see, let's switch that stuff on. Um, mount disk, and it will mount it in that. So F1 and return. So this is the image we've just created of Bear, Bear Essentials. Okay, it should not take this long. Something tells me it didn't do it properly because it's freezing on this freaking screen. Why? Let's load the, uh, let's load the actual one. Um, so that means let's, let's turn this on and go into the settings and disable this. Okay. So fast load. It's doing it from the actual. Oh no, there's no disk in. Mm. What a freak. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Seven, F1, enter. Set that. Let's just reboot the darn freaking 64. Let's try again, yeah? I don't like that sound, but it seems to be copying everything. Hey, before it had gaps in it, now it doesn't. Okay, well it's done again, so let's just do two and test them. Okay, switch this off, this, um, this here, and we will go into there, we'll enable the virtual one. Enabled. Okay. Um, then mount disk. F7. F1. Return. These work. <gasps> yes, it works. Okay, brilliant. Freaking funny. This goes to show just This just goes to show just just check your backups. Make sure that um, you know your backups are working before you kind of you know okay so we managed to you know back up this yeah now let's get another D64 and put that onto an actual disc so let's we're reversing what we're doing now yeah uh, okay so that works um, first backup didn't work for some reason let's just delete that yeah now let's get new old stock fresh disk it's nice and fresh <laughs> so You know what? Let's put this bear that we've just created. Let's put this bear back onto. Um... Okay, so we mount it on B. Let's try the utilities here then. Okay, so F5. Hold this copy. I don't know how to do it. Thingy. Hold this copy. Um... No, F1 source. Okay, just flip them around. So source is that. Destination is this. So we spell. We press space to start. Return. What is BAM copy? I see that in X copy on um, Amiga a lot. BAM copy. I've never known what the freak it is. So yeah. 
you know what the cool thing about this is? Like, you can back up all your, like, your games and stuff. And stuff like this, like, I had these, um, I got these really cheap. These, uh, cause it just reminded me, it just made me a little nostalgic. It, because it just, it's so 80s. I mean, these are Commodore Disc User, like, magazine from 1987. Nice retro magazines. I got this because I like the, um, <laughs> it's a cute, like, floppy disks playing around the circuit board. So, okay, yeah. And yeah, so each of these comes with... Look how freaking retro that is. <laughs> each of these comes with a um, cover disk. I can back these up. Because, of course, they can screw up on, you know, on floppies. So that's the action replay cartridge. We're using it right now. <laughs> as we speak on the ultimate two. Okay, this is gonna take so long. So what I'm gonna do is just cancel this and do a smaller game. Arkanoid. Yeah, Arkanoid. So we're Arkanoid, enter that. Uh, Man on just B. Go into utilities. Disk. Oh, no. Bam copy. I don't know. No idea about that. Okay. Does take. Shouldn't take long. Okay, that took its time. Um, I did it first with Bam copy. Yes. And it took stupidly long. Um, I said ban copy no, and it did it much quicker. And this is Arkanoid, not Bare Essentials. So I don't know how long Bare Essentials would take. I don't want to, you know. So no. Let's see if it works. Arkanoid uh, from the disc itself. So let's come out of here. Go in. Your Still fast load F1 enter. It's loading it from the floppy disk now. Okay. Well, it works. He copied it to floppy. And yeah, take BAM copy off. I don't know what the freak of BAM copy is. Um, I've seen it on X copy on the Amiga, you know, quite a few times, but I don't know what the freak it is. So yeah, BAM copy off, and it does it quick. I'm not sure how long Bear would take, but you know. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so now I've shown you how to, you know, back up your D64s. Uh, sorry, back up your floppies. And if you want to do, you know, there is no utility within the um, Ultima 2 itself to copy two floppies. However, you can use one of these cartridge, you know, whether it's retro replay or action replay or whatever. They all have utilities to copy the floppies and, um, you know, copy discs or whatever. It's just use that, just mount it, just like how I did. So, yeah, let's uh, go to the beginning. We do the same thing with cassettes. So we take out this um, fresh disc. <laughs> it's not fresh anymore. Okay, so we're done with the freaking floppy disks. That took me two hours because things just kept going wrong. I thought it was going to be more straightforward. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so we're in my tap directory. There's only like two tapes. <laughs> so we want to do Buggy Boy. Here, a five sample tape to tap, and we just give a name for the tap, Buggy Boy. Okay, <laughs> um, start tape when back in C64 screen. Okay, this is not a C64 screen, and then you just play the entire freaking tape, don't you? <laughs> 
And yeah, this is gonna take a while. And once it's done, I will let you know. No, I really wish this were to have a visual, you know, something visual indicator. This is not enough. It feels like it's not doing anything. I turned my head all the way around and I'm looking behind me. <gasps> Done! Now, we go into... Yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we go into this. And we're going to F5. Finish track tap. Never done this. Capture, tap, capture, stop. Why is it still saying zero? Okay, let's kind of like get out of here. No. And go back in. Okay, so let's load. Run tape. Okay, so I've actually tried to sample quite a few tapes without any success and I believe there was something something up with the uh, tape sampling or the tape capturing in the firmware or something like this so I'm not sure what's going on with that I was completely unsuccessful even though I was doing everything right I actually looked it up and I was doing everything right but it just wasn't working I tried drinking ghosts and goblins and rainbow dragon red buggy boy freaking four times I think so yeah I've been here a while <laughs> okay Batman the movie Okay, let's try this. Let's run the tape, see if it works first. It runs. And it's just loading. Fantastic. Okay, let's reboot that, go there, and I want to record it on the tape. So I have here brand new Ferrec tape. Well, new old stock. I've got lots of these FE ones. you see the magnetic tip. Okay. Yeah. Here. And what I want to do here now is so we press return. Write the tip. I'm assuming. Press record and play on the tip. Let's think. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so once this is done, I will get back to you and show you the results. So now it is saying ready, it's done, I think. So let's stop that. There we go. Now this seems to be working behaving strangely. Anyway, it seems to be working and um, so that works and the good thing about this is that if you have cassettes that you know they don't quite you know they keep have coming up with tape errors and things like this you can just like record over them you know if you've got a backup and uh, yeah it's just perfect you could just restore them you know as much as you can anyway, and have backups like this so that's that's fantastic um, I just could not get the sample to tape working even though I was doing everything correctly I have no idea why be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter and also SoundCloud thanks so much for your likes your shares do leave your thoughts in the comments below don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more for now, I will say adios. For the generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons, Al Hand, Andrea, Anthony Whittington, Boris Matichin, Brad Hansen, Cameron Armstrong, Kari S. Turner, Karsten Lervad, Casual Commodore, Eric Andre, Espen Golbeck, Gav Messingham, Hayes Maker, James Burr, Jan Bita, Jim Leonard, James Herr, Linus Johansson, Markham Morin, Matthew, Matt Shepkar, Mickey Holm, Nor A, Obraxis, Ranzi, Patrick Ekman, Robert Minnes, Rofi Otterstein, Roy Gelotti, Rudiger Stiedel, Sophie Leroy, Stuart Evans, 
Thomas Presina, Thomas Muller, The Deeply Cynical, Tina, and Wayne Marsh. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels.